Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead, it's your channel. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm Dan from Tiny House Customs. So a few months ago, I sat down with Jake and Kiva from the Tiny Nest Project. If you don't know who Jake and Kiva are, they are another YouTube channel, very similar to mine. They're documenting their tiny house builds from the early stages and beyond. I believe that's their thing. I think that's what they say. That's pretty close. But if you're not subscribed to their channel, please go check them out. The link will be in the description below. Plus, I might put one, am I pointing in the right direction? Yeah, right up there. There's going to be a thing that it already popped out. It already did it. You can click on it and see it. It opened up this bar right here. Yeah, you can do stuff. Click. So a few months ago, I sat down with Jake and Kiva, and we did a question and answer type video uh, pertaining to our projects. Now on this channel, I will be asking them all the questions and they'll be answering them. And then they ask me questions. Now that video will be over on their channel. I'll also put a link for that down below. Um, make sure you go check it out. I think both of the videos are pretty funny and kind of give you a behind the scenes of who we are, how we got to where we are, and what our build's been like, really. So let's go check them out, ready? So I have to ask guys, why did you decide to build a tiny house? Well, we first got the idea after watching a documentary called We the Tiny House People. And after watching the documentary, we kind of realized that we didn't really have any sort of like long-term goal or plan in terms of our housing. And so we were attracted to the idea because the tiny house was sort of like another option besides continuing to rent or having to buy and get like a massive mortgage. Yeah, and like having a, a mortgage and taking that path is kind of like has a lot of other implications in life and I think we like a lot of people especially today with the wealth of information available are interested in a lot of different things we're not like just g going down a steady path where we're going to get a career that's stable and get the mortgage and get the house and just follow that n sort of normal path of life so it, it just it felt like there'd be a lot more freedom to uh, first of all get out of renting and then own something and own something that's a lot more focused to just um, basically sustain our lives by having just what we need uh, and not a lot of maintenance and and not without the mortgage and everything too. So what kind of building experience did you guys have before you started building your tiny house? I had no building experience besides maybe like fixing a fence with a hammer and a nail. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I am an electrician. I uh, started pretty late. Like um, I actually went to school after high school for a while and then did some other jobs and then started an electrical apprenticeship. Uh, and so prior to that, I had no building experience and I've the experience you get as an electrician is specific to doing that type of work so uh, it is sort of limited but I did get to use a lot of different tools and just get familiar with like working with my hands basically and so that's been a super valuable asset in uh, this project for sure. So you guys went to a trailer manufacturer what was the cost that you guys spent on it and did you have to make any modifications was the manufacturer willing to make modifications to the trailer for you? So we happened upon a uh, company called Iron Eagle when we were visiting Portland to check out uh, actually the Tiny House Hotel. And so it was recommended to us by some people down there. And we looked into it and uh, talked to um, Rob, who's the owner, a couple times to figure out uh, what our options were if we wanted to get the trailer from them. And uh, eventually we just decided to, to go for it. Uh, it's got some really cool features that uh, we incorporated into our 3D design when we were planning for it. So we were all kind of prepared to go that route and follow through with that type of trailer. So anyway, we, we bought it and uh, it cost 3500 uh, US and you have to remember that we're Canadian. So uh, and at, at the time of filming this, the exchange rate is quite bad, like it's not in, in Canadian's favor. Uh, but at the time it wasn't too bad. And uh, so it was 3500 base for the trailer and then a couple hundred for the extra options like we got stabilizer jacks on all four corners and uh, the f fender flashing that allows you to layer your sheathing to make it so that water can't get in over the fenders. So anyway, um, the, the total cost for the trailer 
uh, converted to Canadian was just under uh, $4,500. But then, of course, we had to go pick it up. So we had to take a ferry. Uh, there's gas. We stayed one night uh, down there before coming back the next day. There was a bunch of permits uh, and uh, insurance fees and, and importation fees and all sorts of stuff. So all said and done, it costs uh, something like 6100 Canadian to literally go from nothing to getting the trailer here and ready to build on. Um, but uh, in the end, we were really happy that we bought a specialty uh, trailer that was brand new and that we had already planned and designed around it because uh, everything's gone really smoothly. So although it cost more and was a bit of a hassle to go get, I think, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it any differently. So what kind of plans did you guys do before you started your build? Did you, I know you guys did a, um, a Google SketchUp. Was that all that you did for your plans? We started out by making three lists. One was what we needed to have in the house. Then it was what we wanted to have in the house. And then the third was like luxury items. And that's how we sort of like prioritized. Yeah, and like things we needed were like, you know, a, a shower. A bed. A bed, yeah. Like obviously it was just to visualize like these things have to fit into that space. And then the want list was more like, okay, once we've got those things fit in, can we fit in you know, I think at one point we had a washer-dryer combo because you can get those like all-in-one units and we were thinking we wanted one of those originally but after, you know, going through the list multiple times and looking at the layout and, you know, sort of balancing it, our priorities kind of changed a little bit and we got everything that was the highest priority in and kind of dropped a couple things from the list. So from that list, we moved on to designing it in SketchUp, and we did a couple rough designs before we settled on the one structure. So what was the most unique design feature that you guys incorporated into your house? So the one thing that's definitely unique for our build in terms of uh, having never seen it anywhere else is uh, the, the, the DIY smart control of the house. So um, I took a little bit of computer science uh, after high school, and I'm a total computer nerd, so I'm sort of trying to apply what I know about that to the house. And using an Arduino uh, microcomputer, we're going to have the whole house, like the lighting, the furnace, uh, the humidity control, and possibly like water uh, related things and a gas, like uh, auto shut off thing all incorporated uh, into a automated system that I'm going to program from scratch. So I, it, none of it's working yet, <laughs> but uh, it's all wired uh, the way that uh, it needs to be. And hopefully when it's all done and working, it's going to be super awesome and it's going to stand out as being a totally unique in the tiny house world. So what other factors influenced your design? Well, we saw pretty early on when we were using SketchUp to play around with different layouts uh, a Tumbleweed Tiny House video where they had like a split bathroom so it was like a split shower room and toilet room and we thought that that was really cool because it separated the kitchen from the living room so I think that's kind of unique you don't see that too often Mm -hmm. And another thing that I think is unique is that we have the loft over top of the living room space instead of over top of the kitchen, which is kind of common too. And we just thought that in the living room we're going to be like sitting down, lounging, so it's okay to have a lower ceiling than in the kitchen where you'll be standing up most of the time. Yeah. And I, we should mention too that we initially had seen a design in person in Portland where the toilet, or sorry, the whole bathroom was at one end of the house and we started with that design and we're kind of struggling to make it work and then when we saw the, the tumbleweed uh, split bathroom we basically stole that idea, fit it into our design and rearranged things and then we're immediately much happier with the way the layout was looking uh, with that. I didn't know you switched your thing like that. I, I thought your living room was over your living room's behind you right now, or no? We're in the living room right now. Oh, so your what kitchen's you going. behind us is the kitchen. So your furnace is going to go underneath your 
Cabinetry? Yeah. Ah, I didn't know that. So what type of resources did you guys use to uh, educate yourself and prepare you for your build? We did lots of research online, uh, watched lots of YouTube videos, like every tiny house tour that we could find and like to get design ideas and stuff like that. And then for certain tasks that we knew we were going to have to do, like installing windows or roofing or how to deal with the cathedral ceiling and, you know, basically anything we were unsure of how to build, we did some form of research on. And in addition to that, we also attended a tumbleweed workshop that uh, was, we got, it was like a deal. So we got that and it came with the building DVD. Uh, the Tumbleweed DVD. So we watched that as well. Um, I mean, both of which were helpful. And then also we uh, bought um, Andrew Morrison, which is the home uh, tiny house. We got their uh, DVD, uh, which is a, a building instructional DVD. And then we also paid for the online video building series from Dan Luchet, which is Tiny Home Builders. There's Tiny House Build and Tiny Home Builders, I think, are two different websites. So uh, we, we paid for stuff and we found all the free stuff we could and just tried to soak up everything. We really did it a lot of it um, all at once, all before even starting to build anything. We have gone back and refreshed on certain things during the build, but the vast majority of the research was really to get like everything kind of lined up so we knew what we were getting into before we ever you know picked up a tool to start the build so that's pretty cool so when i was doing my planning design phase um i had seen that dan lachey had his his um videos for purchase online uh what was your opinion of his his program that he had offered yeah his series was good uh i mean all the the building videos that we paid for were definitely helpful uh each each uh, package on its own definitely did feel like it was missing some important details because tiny houses are so specific there's certain things that you can't find elsewhere on the internet like you can look at how to install a window because it's a very generic thing but like how do you frame around your fender and so like um the home dvd was they had a different type of uh setup for how the wheels were and they had to build their own fender over it and then like Dan Luchet's trailer was different and like you know so there's no way to really see someone else do exactly what we were going to do so um I mean this is part of the reason that we made our own YouTube series was that we kind of gathered information from so many different sources and then we're going to uh you know do it all ourselves and we thought if we can present you know really highly detailed information on every single step um, that it would fill in some of the gaps that we felt we were getting when we were trying to gather the information ourselves. I feel like there's something to be said also for like watching someone who's like a skilled carpenter building a house and then watching someone who's sort of like not as skilled building a house like we don't have every single tool that's probably needed. Yeah. So it's like a different perspective. Yeah, so it's our, what we're trying to show is like what happens when you, you get information from professionals and then uh, apply that information as an amateur. Because yeah. uh, that's what we are and that's what most people are who are consuming this information. They're amateurs, so we wanted to share with people, you know, what the experience is actually like if you're just a regular person trying to, to make it happen. You didn't shit on him too bad, but you shat on him a little bit. I would have, I would have shat all over that man. It's a fucking rip off. Yes! I'm sorry, Dan, if you, if you're watching. <laughs> so, is there anything that you guys would change in your design? The only thing I can think of to change would be that I wish that we put in a circular window, just solely because I like them. And uh, one other thing that. I would change that's more of just like a technical error that I made was that uh, and it's funny because we spent a whole bunch of time trying to figure out where we were going to fit this air exchanger thing that we wanted to build in that's going to make sure there's fresh air in the house and we finally decided on the spot and figured it out and then we drilled holes through the the wall and there's like trim and the side like there's no changing it now but we actually realized that they're 
not in the right spot. They're diagonal, but they should have actually been straight over top, which, which even would have looked better too. So anyway, that was like a bit of an error, but I would definitely want to change that if I had the chance. So how much have you guys spent on your build and did you have a budget and have you changed that at all? Yeah, so we've spent about uh, 26, well over 26,000 now, uh, and that's Canadian. Um, but that does include some things that are not like physically in place yet. Like that includes the our sink uh, and includes some of the things for what I call my nerd station. So like the TV mount and my a desk that's adjustable. And that, that was like over a grand just for that stuff. So it's hard to say, you know, if that should be included in like where we are now or not. Uh, but if you do include it, it we're over 26,000. And our budget was 25 uh, ish. And that's without really much accurate research and estimate. Like at the time that we were um, planning and stuff, it seemed like 20,000 was the average for like a fairly cheap tiny house. Like if you do, like for the materials, like if you do it yourself. And so we just said, okay, well, we'll try to do it, it with um, for 25. And so I feel like we're pretty, we haven't really exceeded it, uh, you yeah, know, and more that, than we're willing to. That number includes like literally every single paintbrush. Yeah. Every like tiny thing that we bought. So it's like. Yeah. And it also includes like when we talk about the cost of the trailer and like the, uh, the hotel to stay overnight and all those fees for the trailer. That's also because that's in this huge list that we're referring to those are incorporated as well. So that's part of the reason that we, we don't feel like we're really over budget because we know that there's lots of just tiny little extra things that have, have made us already hit 26 plus thousand. And we, I'd say we've got a couple thousand left to go uh, before we are sort of, you know, at a completion type state. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's going pretty well. Like we're, we're totally fine with where we're at with the budget. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, like, we, you do, like, estimates on stuff, but then you don't take into consideration those little things that you need. Like you said, paintbrushes, paint, and just those little things that you don't calculate into your build, and they just add up and make it way bigger than you had anticipated. Yeah, and then there's also things, like, if you have something in, in mind that you want, like our ceiling, we wanted it to be, like, tongue and groove paneled, like, the look of it. And then it was like too expensive for what we first wanted. And then the other option was like only a little bit cheaper. And so it was like a matter of like $150 to get like what we really wanted. So then we just did it. So it's like we could have gotten it cheaper if we really wanted to, to really get down to the pennies, but. Yeah, we, we definitely have been taking the attitude of like, well, we'll pay a little bit extra to get, to make sure we're happy with the final product rather than cutting corners to make us happy now because we want to save money now, but then not being really happy with what we end up with in the end. Cause that's really what's important. Like that's the whole point of the project is to build something that ends up being, you know, what we wanted. So did you guys have a scheduled completion date and has that changed since you've started your build? Our first scheduled nice. completion date was not last Christmas, but the one before. And clearly we didn't make that goal. So our next sort of like move in date is the end of March. So what's one of the biggest challenges you guys have uh, encountered in your build so far? The door. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. So obviously like in our building series, there's a whole episode about replacing the door because uh, you know, it was it was partially our fault, but also just like a misunderstanding when we were ordering the door about what we were getting. Like we thought that the exterior, like an exterior grade door, like not a door for, made for, you know, between two rooms, uh, an exterior door that was an outswing. So obviously it's going to be outside would be, um, you know, suitable to withstand exterior kind of conditions. And basically, long story short, is we didn't uh, seal it enough, and then it expanded because it took on some moisture from like some light rain, and uh, 
once it expanded, it's not like you can compress that back. It was already expanded. It was rubbing against the jam. It was like not operating properly. And basically it, it set us back uh, on schedule for like when we could do our siding. And then of course there was all the work of pulling it out and replacing it with the new one, which we spent a bunch of time preparing. So it was a challenge to say the least. So I've been working on my project by myself and producing these videos on my own, but you guys have been working together to produce these videos. And so what's it like working together as a couple and making the tiny house that you guys have made? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been totally fine. Like, no problem at all. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have laughed. <laughs> that was good. So you guys have been building your tiny house on Kiva's parents' land. How's that been? Do you guys plan on buying land or are you guys going to stay where you're at? Building on a parent's land has been really awesome because we have a garage like really close to our tiny house so we can store all our stuff in there. Um, we built the walls on the garage floor. Yeah and we plan on staying here. So at your parents' house, do you guys have a place to connect in a 240 volt or what are you guys running, 120 volt power source or what do you guys have? Yeah, I mean, right at this moment, um, like we have lights on and stuff in here, but we're just running a, like a totally regular extension cord that I've cut the end off and <laughs> connected the wires temporarily. But, uh, and, and so that just runs in and plugs into it like a regular outlet in the garage. But what we're going to do as a more semi-permanent or like, you know, the permanent for here type of hookup is going to be a, a beefier cable with an extra conductor so that we can do the 240 volt, not just the 120 that a, a normal extension cord can do. Uh, and then I'm going to run that in and uh, put in a, a bigger breaker into the garage's uh, electrical panel. There's a main panel in the house and then there's a sub panel in the garage. And so we've got a pretty close uh, access to putting in a brand new circuit. So that's gonna take care of our power. And then likewise for um, plumbing, like the, uh, the well pump for the property comes into a holding tank in the garage. So we're gonna run an extra little plumbing line off there to get water over here. And then for internet, we're also gonna run um, a Cat6 cable through the garage and uh, get that hooked up. So everything is going to go right through the garage and it's like 30 feet from the, the corner of our house to the garage. So what motivated you guys to put your build up on a YouTube and has it been a distraction to complete your build? Probably our one of our motivations to put um, the, our build up on YouTube was that we thought that it was a resource that didn't exist. So we had been, like we talked about, doing a lot of research online um, before we built our tiny house and we couldn't find anything that was free and showed an entire build start to finish. So that was one main motivation. And the second one was as we started out in the build, we kind of wanted to get feedback from other people who had more experience than us. And then it kind of evolved a bit from there. like. We ended up getting quite a bit ahead on the actual work from where our videos were, so it became less of a uh, like showing people and asking you know what we should do for the next step because we'd already done like multiple steps after that. It's sort of morphed into more of like a documentation of what we've done. And then in terms of the distraction, though, like it definitely has had a significant impact on how much work we get done in the house, like we planned initially to just pound away at a uh, building like we had money saved up and we quit our jobs and we were just going to go at it and get it done but uh, when we engaged in YouTube and that started to grow we started spending more and more time making videos and we made a website and uh, now we have like the SketchUp project or the SketchUp uh, tutorial was a whole project in itself that we have like we've just been building all this stuff and it's become this its own sort of job and of course you know all that time is time not spent 
building the house. So absolutely it's um, added to the overall time for the project, but it is very rewarding to put stuff out there and have people you know, learning it, learning from it and uh, appreciating it and everything. Like, like you're saying, you know, it's a resource now that's there that um, there was not an equivalent to when, when we started, like when we were researching. So you guys have been together for 12 years. Do you guys think you're going to start a family? And do you think you'll stay in the tiny house while raising a family? Yes, we do hope to one day start a family. And as far as raising a family in the tiny house, I think we're just going to kind of see how it goes, sort of take it one step at a time. Yeah, I think like sort of, you could almost say it about our relationship as well as like our future plans is that we kind of take it one step at a time. Like the tiny house is, by its nature, is kind of a short term goal. Like it's achievable both financially and time-wise like we can get in it and live in it the way we live or like the way we want to live now and so we're trying not to over plan and you know we're not going to buy like a four bedroom house now because we think we're going to have three kids because you know things can change and like there's just so many there's too many variables in life so we're basically just starting with with this plan and then it'll basically free us up to make the next choice in life and then, you know, do what we need to do to make the next goal happen. All right, guys, it's been a blast. I had so much fun talking to you today, but I got one more question. What's something that you guys want to tell me that none of your viewers know about you? Something that people might not know about Jake is that <laughs> he's a very talented musician. He plays guitar, drums, piano, and he also sings. Is he looking for a groupie? <laughs> Something that people probably don't know about Kiva is that she has a sociology degree and a soft spot for thrashy punk rock like Rancid and Blink-182 and Courtney Love. <laughs> that was the sweetest answer ever. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry. I just like cackled while you were talking. <laughs> this, is this is fucking too fucking. How, uh, shit, motherfucker. <laughs> well, the one thing that we're doing that's really unique. Did you hear what I burped? It was like the loudest thing that's come through from your end. <laughs> from your end. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. <laughs> an hour and a half, four questions in, we're fucked. Uh, Are we, is this seriously been an hour and a half? Yeah, can you ask the question? <laughs> say it again! Can you, say, can you say it again? I can't wait to hang out with you guys one day. What has been the. What's, so, what's it like uh, working and filming um, all along? Nice. Way to say that. I, I didn't mean We have that. each other. You're all alone. What's that like? Fuck, should I reword it? I should reword it. Re you should it. definitely reword it. Fuck, why am I not even able to talk anymore? <laughs> too many drinks, man. I feel you so shouldn't have poured in the day old. It's all downhill from there. Yeah, I mean, it's been totally good. Like, no problem at all. <laughs> you laugh. You laughed. You laughed. Don't do it again. I'm sorry. I'm you got to mute. You got to mute. Fuck. I fucked this shot up. <laughs> <laughs> so. You got your hands up. I'm always like. <laughs> but you're like. Jump cuts all over the place. <laughs> We can edit that down to something to watch it. That's good, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, again, if you want to check out my answers to this video, the link's going to be down below, and I might do another one of them little things that pops up. You can click there and go check out that video. Don't forget to subscribe to Jake and Kiva's channel, The Tiny Nest Project. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up, comment your great stuff down below. Let us know which one you like better. I like theirs better. I thought theirs was better. But I was in it.
that's that makes me arrogant. They're both good, yeah. See, I'm I'm wet because of that chugging thing I just did. That was stupid. Whatever. But again, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you on the next video.